Hey, this is Jim with Broadfield. Thanks for joining us for another Broadfield Liquid Lunch and Learn every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Joined today with our Wordflow Sales Specialist, Glenn Seaman. Hey, Glenn, how are you? Hey, Jim, I'm doing good. Thank you. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Always great to have you on the show. Uh, you know the way the show works just as well as anybody else. <laughs> I have a nice blood orange blonde ale from Lost Farmer the brewing company right around the block, which you and I have not physically been to yet, so we'll have to make that happen next time you're in New York. Do you have something good for us today? I do. I, I went with a um, raspberry sour ale from Martin House out of Fort Worth. These guys are still my favorite folks for doing really creative and interesting things with sours. You, you do enjoy those sours. I, I will have to get some more of those onto the show. Um, I try to stay away from the sours. To me, it's just a glorified wine cooler. <laughs> but, uh, but I can the, see that. The, the Blonde Ale is definitely a little bit different for me, too. Uh, very good. Definitely do taste some of the orange notes. So uh, here's to a great show, Glenn. Cheers. Cheers. So uh, it's funny. When I went to the fridge and I saw that they had the, uh, the Blood Orange, I said it works in perfectly for a live use coloring scheme and Broadfield's highlight color. Uh, obviously, Broadfield's logo goes with the color of the Mets and the Islanders here in New York, and Live View uses their orange all over the place. <clears throat> and that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the Live View LU300S specifically. Uh, Broadfield is your source for all Live View products, and we're working with them to continue to bring not only the Live View Solo, but some of the higher end products from their product line as well. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to invite Glenn on the show, because Glenn is going to be an integral part in helping you get those sales. So Glenn, I'm gonna say it again. Thank you again for joining us. Are you ready? Let's get into the show. I'm ready. Cool. So let's start first of all by talking about the LU300S. The LU300S is live use um, entry into their pro line of cellular bonded devices. The LU300S is not entry level by any means. It's a huge step above and beyond the Live View Solo, but it is the next step in their uh, product line that gives you the cellular bonding and encoding for 4G, 5G, and has full 4K P60 capability. You can see some of the highlights of the LU300S here, and we're going to talk about how this product and all of Live View's professional products are available now from Broadfield. So you can start with a very easy three-step process. Discuss the opportunity with your Broadfield sales rep and with the guy I have joining me today, Glenn. Glenn, when a dealer has an opportunity that they identify the LU300S is the perfect product for it, how does that call get started, and what do you do to help initiate that and walk them through this process? Yeah, so for, for folks that have not sold any of the Live View products before or only sold solos, you know, your next slide goes in a little bit more detail, but really the conversation has to come to, you know, what makes up a configuration because you've got a field unit, you've got a studio unit, then you've got, you know, have to have a data plan. And there's a lot of other options too that we'll talk about a little bit later on. But the call is really just trying to make sure, hey, you know, you understand the customer, the customer, you know, we understand what the customer's needs are. You know, do they need a one channel server, two channel server, whatever they're going to need, what other options they're going to want to look at. And then we basically do a deal wrench. Um, you know, Live View is still a very, you know, exclusive product. So we want to make sure we're doing a deal wrench. Uh, if you, if you get the deal reg, then we can go and we know that we're going to have better price. You're going to have better pricing. You can work competitively and nobody else is going to come in underneath you and try and steal this, steal the sale away. So really that's, you know, kind of make sure we understand the, the, the customer need, make sure we know who the customer is, and then let's get that deal reg in. And I think the deal reg process specifically with Live View is also there to protect you and the efforts of your sales team. And by you, I'm talking to our dealers. Uh, Live View already has a lot of relationships in place with broadcasters who have a Live View server on board. They have different purchasing agreements already with these huge broadcast companies. They already have terms of engagement on how to fulfill the sale and how to get them additional field units when necessary. 
by working with LiveView in the deal registration process, it allows us to help protect your efforts and to help identify the efforts that are truly unique and special and can ultimately be a great opportunity for you to not only get the initial sale, but to help build a live view relationship in the future. Part of this sales process is not only that step one with the deal registration, it's getting that deal registration approved, and then it's working with live view to get a purchase agreement with the end user. The end user is ultimately going to be the one who's contracted with live view to get the, the data plans and the services necessary for all of this to work together. So that end user relationship still becomes very important when all of these services have to be included. And that brings us into the what do you need to sell an LU300S. And this slide really lays it out perfectly. There is the LU300S with modem bundle, so that would be your field unit. There's the LU2000 servers, and then there's the data plan to support this all. Glenn, can you walk us through a little bit more information on what some of the questions and considerations would be when we start configuring these three, three areas? Yeah, so, you know, around the field unit itself, it's really going to be, you know, the, the nice thing with the 300 is on that first slide, we kind of talked about all the things it can do. You know, if, if they're doing 4K, then that's an option. If they're doing, um, you know, 60, that's going to be an option if they want higher data rates. So really the first thing is just kind of, you know, what what is it the customer needs to do? The beauty is all of this is expandable too. So they can start out small and just say, nope, we're just gonna do, you know, regular, you know, lower lower bandwidth, you know, HEVC encoding, nothing 4K, nothing HDR, nothing, nothing high bandwidth, nothing with the higher data rates. And they can start there and they can scale up, but it's really just understanding what they need there and then looking at options. Do they want things like IFB? IP pipe, things we'll talk about a little bit later on, but it's really trying to understand what are they trying to do in the field. Then when we get to the server, you know, servers can be one channel or two or four. So if they're only gonna have one field unit and that's all they're ever planning on having, great, you get a one channel server. If they might grow, you might get a two channel server, which now allows you to take two different feeds in simultaneously or, you know, four, and it all depends on where you wanna grow. And then the next question always becomes, okay, you know, data rates, data plans. You know, how much data are they going to use? We've got charts that we can look at to kind of figure out how many hours of broadcast they want to do at X number of data rate, at what, at X data rate. Um, and it's really trying to size it. You can always go bigger. You know, you can start with the, the 15 gig plan. And if they say, hey, great, you know, we're going to have a bigger month, you can change that. But we've always want to start them in the right plan to begin with. Absolutely. And I think that's what's great about Live You having all those resources and information to figure out the data plan is Live You has really. Uh, cornered this industry and this this solution for quite a while that they do have a lot of that information and a lot of that feedback. Live you knows what kind of bandwidth and data is going to be necessary to broadcast from the Olympics or to broadcast from a Formula One race or from any other sporting event, uh, a government election or anywhere else where you might want to roll out the LU300S encoder. And we can help you uh, work with them on identifying the right plans. Now, Glenn, you talked about the field unit itself, and that's what the LU300S is. And the LU300S is going to be that piece of hardware that you're holding up there, and then all of the different options that you can turn on and off to run that, whether you're doing that with 4G LTE modems or 5G modems. But the unit itself has two internal modems and two external modems giving you four cellular connections, as well as, like every other LiveView unit, a Wi-Fi connection and a wired Ethernet. So you can really bond up to six data points. Now, for our dealers who are familiar with the LiveView Solo and the way that streams to RTMP, and then it uses their LRT Cloud solution to do all the bonding, the LU300S and the other LiveView units do their bonding with a server like the LU2000. So Glenn, that server is what's bonding all of these different cellular connections together, right? Yeah, it's still, yeah, it's, it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. It's not going up to a cloud. You know, there are options, there's something called LiveView Matrix that allows you to do that for distributing your signal further, but it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer connection 
everything's bonded. So those four cellular antennas, your Wi-Fi, your LAN can all be bonded to make a fat, reliable pipe. And that goes directly to the server and then comes out of the server either as HDSDI or NDI. And that's great. And, and the great thing is once you get that server installed, you can take an LU300S or a live view encoder from anywhere and communicate to anyone that has that live view server. Uh, for a freelance guy, that really gives them a huge opportunity to communicate with broadcasters all over the place. So if you're broadcasting, let's say, a local sporting event, and the high school kid hits a center court shot that's going to be on ESPN broadcast, you can just send them that feed and send them that video, right? Right, and, and that's the beauty. It's, it's a whole, you know, for freelancers, it's phenomenal because now I can, you know, I can travel anywhere with one of these and be Johnny on the spot. And hey, there's a, there's a tornado heading through downtown Dallas. Great, I've got my unit. I, you know, just say, hey, you know, who wants this? I can hit all the local affiliates. I can hit remote broadcast. Anybody that has a live view server, I have the ability to work with them to send my feed to. So just, it, it's, we're selling a lot of these. We're selling a lot of them for a while now where it's just somebody that's a freelancer that just wants to be able to be, you know, out there for anybody that needs a local news feed. And that's great. And that's a great setup. Uh, and the nice thing about the LU300S is it allows you to do that in broadcast quality, in high quality that's available today, and in the HEVC format, which not only gives you that high quality, but also saves on some of that bandwidth that we were talking about. And that's really one of the biggest advantages of HEVC is that you get kind of the best of both worlds in performance and quality versus uh, file size or bandwidth. Um, Glenn, is there anything that you want to add to some of that HEVC stuff? No, I mean, HEVC is great you, because now what you're getting is you're getting a higher quality at a lower bandwidth. So you're actually, your data rates, your data plans go further because you're able to get the same thing you would be getting out of H.264 size wise, but a much higher quality or, you know, the same quality at lower data rates. And, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it, it is a higher quality. It's much more efficient in a codec. You're getting great results out of it. I mean, I'm coming in, we didn't mention it, but I'm coming into you folks through a live view. So I'm, I'm going into, I've got a mirrorless camera feeding into my live view 300, and that's coming directly to you folks. We're doing this at about 3.5 megabits per second over two cellular, actually three cellular uh, networks. Right now, I'm not even using my house Wi-Fi or my house network connection. Yeah, that's a great point, and probably something we should have topped off the show with uh, is that you're coming in with us <laughs> using this technology. Um, we, it, it's so seamless compared to our normal workflow that I forgot to mention it completely. But that really is the greatest thing about that LU300 is we have our own server mounted here in our studio. Glenn is coming into that server, and we're even going to talk about the way we've configured the audio to hit the talk back so that him and I can participate in this call together. Uh, the nice thing about the LU300S and one of the upgrades from the previous LU300 model is some of that management and control capability and the GUI on the unit itself. Uh, the GUI is now on a 2.2 inch color display, high resolution display with improved brightness, easier to use, especially outdoors, uh, full control either on the GUI or through Live View Central, and it's easier to navigate than it was before, uh, even with their little slide control knobs and some of the different ways to go. Glenn, I don't have a unit here, but you have an LU300S there in front of you, don't you? I do. There we go. Uh, so you can see, e even on camera, uh, how clear and how easy that interface is going to be to use uh, with that new jog, uh, rotating jog, uh shuttle or button or knob or whatever you want to call it there on the side of the unit uh, makes navigating that menu much easier than before. And then, and, Glenn, and the really slick thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I say, and the really slick thing about it too is, you know, once you've set up those connections, literally, you know, I'm I'm connected to the office in New York. I'm here in Dallas. You know, they're already feeding into the TriCaster. When I'm ready, I just hit the play button. I just hit the start button and my stream starts going to them right away. They don't need to do anything. They don't need to go to the server. There's nothing that needs to do because that connection is already established. So no matter where I go, just one button click and now I can start sending my feeds to them. 
Absolutely. And, and it's really, you can go absolutely anywhere with it. You know, one of the nice things is the ruggedized design and the different carrying case options. Uh, they have a backpack available. They have the case that you have there. They have belt pads. They have all different options on how to take that unit out into the field. They have the improved Wi-Fi and MIMO capabilities. They also have eight audio channels now and the ability to do the audio talkback, which again, we're doing to have you on the show today, bringing you in over the LU300, but also communicating back to you. Now, Glenn, I know that there was a little bit of a challenge in configuring that talkback with our LU2000 server. So if you can explain a little bit about the challenges that we faced there. Yeah, and, and I, I wouldn't say challenge because it wasn't really a difficult thing. You know, the server itself is a Linux server. So, you know, it doesn't have any audio inputs on it. So when you want to do IFB or TalkBack, which, you know, is an option on the live view, uh, when you need to do that, you need to get an audio interface into that server. Uh, I think you've got a slide that has a list of all the different um, supported hardware devices. It's not like you can just go and buy anything and put it in. You've got to have something that has the right Linux drivers that works with the unit. But, you know, once we got that going, got the drivers loaded, very straightforward, very easy to send an audio feed in. So basically what we've got is, you know, my audio is coming from my live view unit to the studio. That's being fed into a TriCaster. Uh, we then have the TriCaster audio output, one of the mixed channels, going into a Focusrite device or Focusrite audio interface yep. that is bringing the audio and sending it back to me. And, you know, the other thing we didn't point out is, yes, I'm coming in live, and really, the lag between Jim and I is less, it's about nine-tenths of a second. So it's really quick where we're having a real decent conversation here without any, you know, any real delay on either end. Absolutely. You know, I, I interrupted you several times already. I don't even have to finish. I don't even have to wait to finish for you to stop talking. I can just interrupt and chime in. Uh, <laughs> it really is a true conversation. It doesn't have the, the light that some of the video conferencing software would have. This is truly a broadcast solution. And part of it being a broadcast solution, if you're going to...